Hello and welcome everybody. So today it's all about the film look and how you can achieve it very, very easily using Lightroom for your pictures. So let's jump right into it. And this is a market scene from Lao. As you can see, it's a very timeless picture because there's kind of not much modern stuff going on. And that's what I would recommend you to use. Just use a timeless picture. It works especially well and kind of looks more natural using film in my opinion or kind of the film look. So first thing I'm gonna do here, or I guess what's most important is, you see there are some highlights that are clipped and because this is a really great draw file from the A6300, I can go back into the highlights and recover pretty much all of that. However, film has a much lower dynamic range than a raw file from a modern camera, which means that having some highlights clipped can actually work in favor. And I'm still gonna bring back the highlights by that much, but then I'm gonna go into the tonal curve and bring up the highlight slider here. And the great thing is you can then go to this little pointer in the actual curve, which is representative of the area that the highlight slider adjusts in terms of the exposure. And then you can bring that a little bit more towards the left, so more of the highlights will be increased. As you can see, especially in the background here, it does make a big difference. And now what we have is still a lot of highlight details, but at the same time, we still have something clipped. And that is a really great combination that you can use. And of course, film has less dynamic range, both in the highlights, but also the shadows. So what I wanna do instead of just going into the minus shadows here in tonal curve, I've actually got something a little bit better, which is going up into the basic adjustments bringing down the blacks. And you really wanna make sure that there's something clipped. It doesn't necessarily have to be a ton, but yeah, you can see this would be way too dark how it is, uh, at least for my preference. So then I can go into the tonal curve and actually bring up the shadows and look at that look compared to before. It just, it just brings up the shadows in a way that is very, filmish and you still have these clipped sh uh, shadow parts in some areas but you don't notice them as much because the contrast between the clipped blacks and the rest of the picture or the rest of the dark parts is now a lot more extended as if i would bring down the shadows you can see it overall becomes more dark and now it's really we still have these clipped dark parts but we have an overall much brighter shadow scene so that's a very big thing here. And I'm also gonna bring up the exposure, not for any particular reason, just because it's a little bit dark, maybe even bring up the overall very broad shadows here in the basics, maybe even more than the actual exposure. And the thing about the color here, it's kind of tricky because there was you know, a roof which the light was shining through, which gives it a weird color cast. So it's not gonna be, um, well, okay, I'm gonna try to, change it a little bit and see what works. I think I'm gonna go for an overall more bluish look and then just bring the tint into a relatively neutral, yeah, relatively neutral position. And this is just about the overall look because you don't wanna just get a film look, you also wanna make the picture look better overall, right? So like the color temperature and stuff, I don't use that to get any look because there's much better tools for it. All right, so clarity is a very big thing I really wanna mention because a lot of people, especially when it comes to film, they just wanna bring the clarity to the right. And I don't know about you, but this look, it's just, I, I don't like it whatsoever. It brings out every small texture way too much and it just looks like some auto HDR, whatever. I, I don't like it whatsoever. So I'm not gonna play with the clarity at all. Instead, what I can do though, is actually bring down the overall saturation and saturation just brings up and down the overall colors in a very even way. So you can bring that down and then in turn bring up the vibrance, which is much more selective about colors and tries to choose the colors that aren't as prominent uh, as it is and just bring them up a lot more than the saturation would. So it's much more selective and by going into the minus with one, going into the plus with other, you can create a more separative look. So some colors are more saturated than others, which I found is, you know, it's kind of like a distinct film look that 
um, film tends to struggle with of getting all color equally. And I'm not talking about large format or whatever. I'm not talking about a specific film because this is just about the general film look. And going down here, I could play around with the HSL tool. That's a great way to adjust the colors further. But I don't want to spend like 10 or more like 20 minutes, you know, going in detail of everything. So I'm just going to go into the split toning and here you have a little box. So just click on this box. And what you tend to find for, again, just a classical stereotypical film look is having some green tones in the highlights. And I really prefer to go in kind of a cool green and mix it with a little bit of blue. And, you know, usually in most pictures, I would just go into the warm tones because it works really well, looks natural. But again, here it's a very big part of getting that really good film look. And you don't want to go too far with any of this. You can, of course, if you really want to make an artistic look. But to me, it's just about getting a very subtle film look, not like overblowing it and making it look like some really cheap, crappy Polaroid or whatever. So I'm just going to add maybe 15% saturation of that color and then go into the shadows, also this little box. And here, you know, there's a lot of different ways you could go. You could also go into the green tones, kind of a different uh, tonality of the greens. Or what I found to work really well is going kind of a blue and magenta mixture. Because it's already quite magenta-ish, I'm not going to go too far here but instead just go into the blue tones the most. And again, just like 15 saturation. And then what you can actually do is go down. We definitely do not want to reduce noise because noise is one of the very characteristics of film. In fact, I'm actually going to go down here into the, where is it? All right, the effects tools, and I'm going to add a tiny bit of grain. Now grain is, you know, if you go too far, it just looks like a bad picture you shot at like 50,000 ISO. So you don't want that, but just adding a little bit can kind of simulate that film look and um, you can customize it as well. But something that is actually interesting is with digital, if you want to have the best possible picture, you of course want to shoot at the lowest ISO possible. But if you shoot film, then shooting at 800, 1600, 3200 ISO or above, might actually work well or better in the overall look and it also decreases dynamic range as you go further into the high ISOs. But personally that's not what I thought of when I took this picture. So uh, you know you can simulate it and I prefer to have the full range and the best quality if I do not want to go for the film look. But it could be really fun to go out for an afternoon and just try to shoot you know regular day scenes at like 3200 ISO and just go for that distinct film look. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, another trick is to go a bit into the minus D haze, and that will just open up everything a little bit. As you can see, the different amounts look very different. This looks very, very faded, very washed out, and it looks kind of old, but it's too much. It's way too much for my taste. So I'm just going to go maybe minus, oh God, minus four, because everything else is already too much. And then I'm also gonna add some vignetting. Now, older lenses tend to have, just tend to have more vignetting. And that's a very easy thing you can do. Just go into the effects, bring down the amount. I would recommend you to bring in the midpoint. You could even bring the feather to the minus so the actual vignetting becomes more uh, apparent because it doesn't blend in as well. Usually I would do the exact opposite. But again, this is about a specific look, not about a you know, cool or natural looking picture at all. And I'm going to go for a relatively decent amount here. And let's just see overall, I think I'm going to go back to the color temperature, just make it a little bit warmer. And you know what, let's go into the HSL tool real quick. I'm not going to explain it here because I really don't want to bore you for too long about these detail things, but I'm just going to change the colors of the red slightly. I think I'm going to bring up the yellow tones a bit in terms of the saturation and also bring up the luminance of the red. And I think, you know what, there's just a little bit more overall, I think, saturation needed. So let's bring that from minus 16 to around minus, uh, minus 11. And I could add some contrast, but that actually 
it actually doesn't really work and it makes it more look more punchy. So I'm just gonna say that I'm done here. If you see the comparison from before and after, you will see that it overall looks more washed out. And you know what? I think I could even go further into the minus blacks here, just so there's at least some more clipped blacks. All right, I think that looks really good. But you can see in comparison here from before and after, it looks a lot more um, just faded out. The colors are less true to life. And at the same time, it's not too crazy. You know, if you go here, you can see there's more grain. There's, there's a less smooth differentiation into her skin tones right here. So the dress is still very dark, but the skin tones just look way more cheap and filmish because again film doesn't have that dynamic range if you go to the background you can see there's a very heavy color tint as we go further to the right at least compared to the original raw file and if you go here into the front again way more noisy and here especially you can see these uh, backs are a lot more greenish shine a lot more and that's just an effect of having more different colors that are maybe not as true to life but look really good in that style. Or just look at the eggs. I mean, the eggs look completely colorful and weird. And you can see, again, there's like shadow and very bright highlights. It doesn't look nearly as smooth. So I hope you kind of could get the ideas that I use when editing for a film style. I mean, again, this is a specific picture. Other pictures might require a different kind of editing. But uh, yeah, I I'm just rambling. You got the tips and I hope you found them helpful. Also, let me know if you would like to see me do more kind of stylized editing videos rather than just trying to make a raw file look pretty and punchy and all of that. So thanks again and have a wonderful day. Bye.